Good evening. It's good to see you once again and to be in the assembly with the people of God. Please, please turn to the 10th chapter of the book of Luke. We've heard this story many times before. I appreciate the compliments on the lesson this morning and I'm thankful for this opportunity to be able to stand here and share the word of God with you once again. This is a section of scripture that deals with the spiritual and it shows the the fact that we are to de-emphasize the physical that we're to choose the spiritual over the physical. And so the Bible says in Luke chapter 10 and verse number 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet. And the Bible says, and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Hence the reading of this section that deals with Martha and Mary. You know, the Bible is replete, good people, with lessons that we are to read, to study, and to place in our lives. God will not force us to learn, but we're better off if we would learn those lessons and make application to our lives. We find on this occasion that Jesus was welcome into this home. Bethany was located on the eastern slope of the Mount of Olives. And it was on this road that linked Jerusalem to Jericho. It was just over a mile and a half from Jerusalem, or about a half hour's walk. It would have been a very convenient place for Jesus and his fellow Galileans to stay when they visited Jerusalem for a feast day or on some other occasion. Now, also we find that it provided the opportunity uh, for the Lord to teach this lesson. And Luke records that Jesus' custom was to go to this particular place. Look at Luke chapter 22, uh, verses 39 through 40. Luke 22, verses 39 uh, through 40. And it says, And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And so it was here that Jesus encouraged them uh, that they should watch and wait for him. Now there are three passages of scripture which mention Martha. Luke 10, 38 through 42. And there Jesus taught in her home. And Martha was busy preparing her food and she wanted to provide for her guests. John 11, 1 through 44. 
And we find Jesus raised her brother Lazarus from the dead. And then in John 12 and verse number 2, we find there that Jesus visited her home six days before his crucifixion. And we find that she was busy preparing food. And then Mary was there anointing Jesus' feet uh, with the costly perfume. You know, life is full of distractions. And if we are not centered in Christ, if our minds are not on the Lord Jesus Christ, it's so easy for one to become distracted. And the Bible says that she had a sister called Mary who moreover was listening to the Lord's word, seated at his feet. But Mary was distracted by all of this preparation. And so she came to Jesus and she said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all of the serving alone? Why don't you tell her to come and help me? Have you ever tried to do something or to undertake uh, an engagement or something that you wanted to do and then you find out it was a bit much for you? And it appears that on this occasion uh, she needed a little help. She said, tell her to help me, Luke 10, 39 through 40. Both Mary and Martha were disciples of Jesus. As the disciples of the Lord, sometimes we see things a little different. Some will strive to do what they believe to be spiritual things, and others will strive to do what they believe to be good things. We do not have to choose between worshiping the Lord like Mary are serving the Lord like Martha. Neither does there need to be such a conflict between our physical or secular needs or our spiritual growth. Sadly, that is exactly what many believers end up with today. But a careful reading of the context shows that Mary had been in the kitchen uh, with Martha until Jesus started teaching. And note that Martha said that her sister had left her alone to do all of the serving. But Jesus knows that neither Mary nor Martha can live by bread alone. Amen. It was now time to digest some spiritual food. And you know we fill our souls up sometimes with so much radio. But some people, all they do is listen to talk radio all day long. Some, some ladies watch the stories all day long. Excuse me, ladies. And uh, some men love sports. They'll watch every game that comes on the TV. Lord have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> but what we find is we, we have choices in life. The other things in this case are not really bad things. Sometimes even good things can fill up our lives to the point where we neglect our souls. And that's the thing that God does not want us to do. You can always do something. It may not be bad, but you can always do something. And sometimes we do a little too much of these things. God has not blessed us with our families. Our friends, our jobs, abilities, and other gifts to give us an excuse, to give us an excuse so that we might abandon a closer walk with him. For the scripture says in John 15 and verse number 5, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So certainly we would not want to leave Jesus behind. But look at Luke 22 and verse number 39. And there the Bible says, And he came out and went as he was wont 
to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. You know, there comes a time when we need to feed our souls. Now, when Sister Johnson says, come to the table to eat, she doesn't have to say it but one time. I know what she means when she say, come and eat. Robert, are you ready to eat? I almost always say, yes, I am. But that's the physical food. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes I have to admit, I know none of you don't do this, but sometimes I eat a little bit too much of it. But it's good to me. And I try not to eat too much of it, but it's good to me. But we should have an appetite like that for the word of God. We should eat it in the morning, eat it at noon, eat it at night. Really, we should eat it all through the day. You can take one scripture and put it in your mind and let it stay in your mind and cultivate and nourish your soul all day long. Martha was worried over these physical things. Martha was concerned about physical nourishment. Mary was more concerned about getting her soul fed. We are Martha or Mary today. Somebody in here is either following Martha or Mary. In fact, all of us are one or the, or the other when it comes to uh, practicing uh, the attitude uh, that is reflected in this particular section. So it's no wonder that many Christians are weak. They lack spiritual vitality. They never take the time to just come and, and refresh themselves in the presence of the Lord. You know what the Bible says? It says, I was glad, not sad. It says, I was glad when they said unto me, what? Amen. Let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, I look forward to Sundays and Wednesdays. I look forward to every opportunity to worship God, to serve God. It's not painful. There is a need that I have to be in the presence of God. And until we develop that understanding, we can talk to people, we can, we, we can share with people, but it has to come from within. There must be a love of the things of God. And this is what Jesus was teaching. He said, I'm not going to tell her to get up from the word of God. I'm not going to tell her to leave the word of God and go and serve tables. I'm not going to tell her that. And if you read the story, that's what you get. And so the Bible is saying to us tonight that we as the people of God, we must take time to come into the presence of God. We must have some soul food. And I don't mean collard greens and yams and cornbread and macaroni and cheese. Some of y'all might say that's my food too. But, but, but soul food has to do with the spiritual nourishment provided to us in the word of God. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2. At verse number 15, God says that the church, that his people are to grow in the knowledge of God. That we, we, we you know, we're not to be the same every year. We're not to, we, we, you know, we're not to squander our time and refuse to learn his word. It is a duty. And I hear people say sometimes, and I totally disagree. Do I have to come to the Sunday morning Bible class? No, you don't. Do I have to come to the a.m. worship? Do I have to come to the p.m. worship? Do, do I have to come to the 7 o'clock Wednesday night Bible class? What if I want to do something else? And what you, if you read the Bible, you see, sometimes people have to read for themselves because, because when we tell them certain things, they don't get it. You have to arrive at the point in your life 
where you can see what Jesus is saying. Jesus was the master teacher. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was teaching. We are better off when we're in the house of God. We're better off when we're learning God's word. We are better off when we are growing Christians in the faith of God. And so the Bible says study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. How many scriptures in the Bible can you explain to someone? Can you share the plan of salvation with people? Do you know the difference between the church of Christ and denominational churches? Or do you think all of them are right? If you study the Bible, you learn the difference. Amen. Some people say, well, any way we'll do, just so you get in a way. Well, I don't believe that. And the reason I don't believe that is because the Bible does not teach that. Amen. We have to rightly divide the word of God. We have brethren today who make no distinction in their teaching or in their preaching today. It's just like being in a denominational house. And they feel no need to say and teach the Bible the way God gave it. But if we grow in the grace of God, then we will get the nourishment that our souls deserve. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 2. And so the Bible says, the Bible says, and when you read this, church is talking to you. When I read it, it's talking to me. People say, well, do, do, do I have to do this? No, you don't have to do anything. See? I used to ask my mama, I said, mama, do I have to do it? Said, no, you don't have to do it, but I'm going to beat the <laughs> skin off you. <laughs> Jesus won't beat the skin off you. You can do just like you want. But when you get to the judgment, if we haven't made sufficient growth in our spirituality, sad is going to be our case. Listen to what it says. And, and, and see, the Bible teaches us that we ought to be glad to do the things of God. Listen, as newborn babes, that's the, that's the type of spirit Church of Christ uh, members should have. As newborn babes, what? Desire. The sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Amen. Every person in the church needs to grow. We need to come out of the baby state. Amen. We need to grow. We need to leave the barley and get a turkey leg. Well. <laughs> right? Which my wife would give me some milk in the morning, milk in the at twelve, milk in the baby. Wait a minute, what's wrong? So I got to feed you like a baby. No, I need something else. See, the word of God. You start off with soft stuff. Some people want to stay on the soft stuff all of their lives. Amen. It's hard for some people to take the word of God. But if we grow, we'll be able to. Amen. And then in verse 40, back to Luke 22 and verse number 40. Luke 22 and verse number 40. The good book says, And when he was at that place, he said unto them, He said unto them, Pray that you enter not into temptation. And so Martha was cumbered. That means she was distracted. She was driven about mentally. See, that's how the devil get us. He works on the man. Yes. If he works on the man, the body is going to follow. Amen. You give him your man, don't worry about anything else. I said this morning, you got to fight the devil. Yes, sir. And here's Mary. She's sitting calmly listening to the word of God. It's strange, but sometimes people go to the house of God and they still, they, they do not listen to the word of God. When we come into the presence of God, through prayer and Bible reading and worship, the burdens of life tends to grow 
amazingly like. If you stay in the worship of God, if you stay with the Bible, if you stay around Bible-believing people, Amen. your world tends to get better. Amen. Now, I'm not saying everybody in the church is, is uh, doing the right thing, you know, because we all need help. Amen. Uh, but uh, David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Amen. So it's good Christians that we come and we sit and we listen to the word of God and we learn that the Lord is concerned about our worries and that God loves us and we learn that we can develop a peaceful outlook on life. That's what Paul said to the church in Philippi. Turn to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And verse, let's start at verse number 6. Philippians chapter 4. And Paul says, be careful. In other words, don't be worried. Don't be distracted. Don't don't be so out of kilter. Don't, don't be so off base. Don't be so anxious. You know how some of us are? We worry so much. And somebody said most of the things we worry about, they're never going to happen anyway. Amen. But we just worry about them anyway. The Bible says be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, it said, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, he said, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, he said, think on these things. Amen. Put your mind on spiritual matters. And then he said in verse number nine, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard. And the Bible says, and seen in me, do. And he says, the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. And so, there are too many things sometimes that worry us and bother us. Anxiety is a killer. Many of the physical and mental ears of our present day are stress related. And Martha is certainly a stressed out lady at this point in time. Her exasperation can be seen in the way she forms her question. Lord, do you not care? You know, sometimes we want people to do just what we want them to do. Amen. We have to let people arrive and come to the benefit of spirituality on their own. We can't make people, we can't force people to do anything. And so when our faith grows, then our anxiety lessens. When we understand that God is standing by, we know that everything is going to be all right. Amen. And so, as Jesus said, do not be anxious. We worry about not only do we worry about where, where, how am I going to do this or how am I going to do that? We, once we get that done, then we'll say, well, how am I going to get that done the next time? Well, if you've already got it done, you should thank God for that. And you should recognize that if God took care of that, he can take care of everything else. Amen. Jesus said, stop worrying about what you're going to drink, what you're going to eat. He said, but seek ye first, what? 
the kingdom of God. He said in his righteousness. And all of these things shall be added unto you. A minister one time was very unhappy to learn that he had preached a powerful sermon against betting. I mean, he wore that sermon out. Then he discovered that one of his own deacons was a heavy gambler. So the preacher hurried over to explain to the deacon that he really didn't mean for that sermon to come across just like that. And it was not a personal attack on him. The deacon said, don't worry about it, preacher. He said, it's a very poor sermon that doesn't hit me somewhere. When the word of God is preached, it's supposed to hit you. It's supposed to find you wherever you are. And it's supposed to help to make you better. Amen. Look at verse number 42. And uh, I need to hurry to my conclusion. I don't know why I'm trying to be so long in it today. This preaching sometimes gets good to you. I got to start making me some notes that says hurry up and close out. In Luke 22 and verse number 42. Notice what the Bible says. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but what? But thine be done. And so in sitting at Jesus' feet, Mary was able to find fulfillment and she was able to find contentment. What about in your life? Is your life full of good things? Are you rejoicing that God is able to satisfy you? When God cannot satisfy us, then certainly it's because we are being distracted by the devil. In 2 Timothy 1, 7 through 8, the Bible says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. But the Bible says, be thy partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. And so Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled. He said about many things. He really mildly rebukes Martha here. He mentions her name twice, indicating he wants her to pay very close attention to what he is about to say. He tells this wonderful woman that she is careful and troubled about many things. This word careful means to be troubled with cares, to be anxious or worried. What would Jesus say to you if he had this conversation with us? What would he say to you? As he looked in your life, as he looked in your heart, could he see that there were things that divided your love towards him and those things from those things that are spiritual? The word trouble is from... A Greek word which means to be disturbed, to be agitated, to be in turmoil, to be stirred up or ruffled. That's what the devil does, isn't it? Amen. He gets you all stirred up. You can't think straight. Yes. Sometimes we get so mad. Listen, when you're in a situation and, and you find yourself growing angry, you need to calm down. Because you're about to make a mistake. Some of us get so mad that we can bust. We need to chill out and calm down and recognize that whatever you all upset about, it's not worth it. Babe Ruth struck out 1,330 times, but he also hit 714 home runs. We're going to make mistakes in life. We're going to be successful some of the time. But we need to recognize that Jesus is concerned about us all of the time. 
And so, are we like Mary today? Are we like Martha? And Jesus concluded, he said, but only a few things are necessary. Really, that was just one. He said, Mary has chosen the good part. He said, that will not be taken from her. The good part which Mary had chosen was to listen to the Lord's teaching. In the final scheme of things, the things Jesus said that day were of much more importance than what he ate. I remember one time they said uh, to the Lord, they said, Lord, uh, get up and, and, and come and eat. Jesus said, I already got my meat. He said, my meat is to do the will of God and to finish his work. I think we should feel that way in our lives. That the will of God is so important that we should set our priorities to the point where we are serving God and honoring God and loving God and loving his word Amen. and leaving the right impression with those who are around us. Yes, there are two choices here tonight. What is your choice? Which way are you following? Are you like Mary? Or are you like Martha? Jesus said she has chosen the better part. I'd just like to say as I close, we will be better off tonight if we choose the better part. Tonight, if you're not a Christian, through faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, you can be a child of God. And I would encourage you this week, let the word of God Live in your heart. Let the word of God produce faith in your soul. Yes. Let the word of God be next to you and close to you. Let it abide in your soul. Instead of allowing the devil to talk to you, let God's word be in your heart and encourage you. If you, as a Christian, a child of God, if you walk contrary to his will or his way, if you have done things that would have caused you to bring embarrassment upon his church. And if you wish to correct that, we'll give you the opportunity while we stand and sing the song of encouragement. Will you come to the Lord tonight? Will you come, will you come, will you pour broken heart?